June 21st, episode five, wake up. I was listening to a video the other day at the gym. Arnold was talking about staying hungry. And in it, he talks about, and if anyone's ever listened to his five rules, uh, he talks about dreaming big um, or having big goals, staying hungry, working hard. Um, you, know, you can't cl climb the ladder of success with your hands in your pockets. I, I love that saying. Um, and two others which, which are not at the top of my mind at the moment, but, but in particular, I want to, because Arnold always talks about this, this notion of staying hungry. And the presupposition here is that you need to know what it means to be hungry. And in order to know what it means to, to be hungry in the first place, presupposes that you know what it's like to have nothing. To, to be a have not, to be at rock bottom. And I want to use this episode to talk a little bit about how, you know, in life and particularly in, in the, the madness of modernity, we are trying to remove things like being at the bottom. Uh, we're trying to bring down those who are at the top. We're trying to equalize everything in this fight for equality um, and remove things like hunger and pain and suffering and death and all these things that we think are bad but fundamentally represent the other side of a necessary spectrum across life. I want to look at one of those dynamics because because I think one of the, the problems in society that we have is that people think things are static when they see the top 1% and the 99% as an example. They think those 1% just stay there and that's all they do. Um, and the 99% stay there and that, 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 that hierarchy is fixed for some reason. What they don't realize is that life and all of these things are dynamic. Uh, people who start at the bottom generally fight to get to the top and then people who are born at the top don't usually stay there, they usually come down um, for, for different reasons. Now, there, you know, there are inconsistencies in the world where the game can be rigged um, and recently Max Kaiser, I think, termed the concept of cantillionaires uh, people who benefit from the Cantillon effect because they're close enough to the rules uh, or close enough to the issuers of the monetary instrument in society that they can disproportionately benefit uh, over other people who aren't that close to the monetary spigot to frame it that way. Now, you know, Bitcoin obviously provides a solution to that and in a Bitcoin denominated world, uh, you can't get Cantillionaires. Uh, you can't get parasites who can effectively leech and thieve from society, from the work that everybody else does, uh, without producing nothing. So, but that, that that's the topic of another thing. I, I, what I more so want to talk about today is just the principle of staying hungry, the principle of struggle, and the and juxtapose that against the naive notion that in some way, shape or form, equality is something to aspire to, um, or the removal of difficulty and hardship is something that we should be doing as a society or as people. It's madness. So the dynamic of life that I wanna, that I wanna explore during this discussion is being at the top versus being at the proverbial bottom. People inherently don't want to be at the bottom. Um, you know, and you know, they fight and live and struggle and do what they need to do throughout life to get to the top. Um, but what they fail to realize, um, and you know, and then, then sorry, you also have people that you know want to abolish the bottom, you know, like as if the bottom shouldn't exist. But what they fail to realize is that uh, for there to be a top, there needs to be a bottom. Uh, we live in a 3D you know, universe, as far as uh, as far as we understand, at least in the physical realm. Um, so I want, I want to explore why they both exist, particularly from a from a societal standpoint, not just um, you know and, and, you know metaphysical, social, societal, whatever. But um, I, I want to explore why they both exist. I want to 
and why this differential between the top and the bottom and the, the dynamics that are involved uh, in any living system of moving from top to bottom and having that flow um, is absolutely critical for life itself to actually exist. We'll start with the upsides of being at the top because that's what most people generally have a relationship with or have an aspiration to. So, you know, being at the top, you get things like luxury, comfort, ease, you know, leverage, uh, you know, call it fame, more choice, options, uh, all of these sorts of things. But, uh, you know, you miss out on some of the benefits of being at rock bottom include, you know, when, when you're down and out, you have the opportunity to build depth, you build hunger, you build strength, you build perseverance, you build determination, you build, you build desire, you know, you build courage, you build bravery. You know, when your back is against the wall, when you're up against the ropes, when you don't have a fucking choice, you, you learn to build spiritual strengths, you learn to build character, something that you don't have the opportunity to do with the same depth or authenticity of when you're at the top. It's a very different kind of life, it's a very different kind of authenticity. Um, and what people who are you know, inherently born at the top or who are so-called privileged, what they miss out on is building that depth. And by going around and trying to eliminate the top and the bottom and by forcing everyone into this lukewarm middle, we miss the advantages. We miss the, um, the, the, the best that you get from both sides of the spectrum. You know, because every part along the spectrum has its place. You know, we can't all cram into one because that's just, I mean, A, it's a stupid thing to try and do, uh, but B, it's just physically impossible because, uh, you know, th th there is no 2D plane, um, you know, in existence as far as I know. Um, and and, and this, this philosophy extends across to many things, you know, pleasure and pain. Uh, you know, in our attempt to remove pain, from society and from life. We remove meaning and we become numb in a sense to life. And we lose the benefits that come along with the struggle because it's through the struggle that we find meaning in life. The bottom is extraordinarily important. It's where, it's where you build depth as a human being. Um, and you know, the, the name, the, the depth that is implied by being at the bottom, um, it, it helps to define what it means by notions such as spiritual depth or, you know, or psychological depth or emotional depth. And, and furthermore, the, the lower you go, uh, the higher you can rise. Um, and that's not to say that, yeah, you should go fuck up your life tomorrow or that you should, you know, purposely go as low as you can. Um, you know, that, that's not what I'm saying here, it's, but it's, it's that, it's that differential. Um, Tony Robbins, you know, generally talks about, you know, people who've had spiritual suffering are most inclined or most prone to building spiritual muscles. Um, and it's, it's that... It, it, it makes me laugh because you know people find it so normal that if you want to go and build muscle at a gym, you go to the gym. Uh, but but they forget to dig a little bit deeper, and that this this lack of depth of thought seems to pervade uh, much of society today. But what you're doing when you're going to the gym is you're struggling, you're going through pain, you're breaking yourself down in order to heal and grow. That this is a fundamental requirement, and it's. It's no different in the realm of the mind, the realm of the emotions, the realm of the spirit, um, you know, the realm of your psychology, of your being. Um, you know, it requires struggle and sacrifice and persistence and pain. It requires you to be fucking hungry. And whilst I do believe that you can, I guess, emulate hunger, there is nothing like the authenticity that comes from having been at the bottom in some way, shape or form, having truly been hungry. It's an incredible thing. 
coming back to the point about you know building depth you know the lower you go the higher the higher you have to um to rise you know relatively um you know the, the that relative difference um that range the broader the range the richer the life and trying to sh make that range smaller in society where people have less of an opportunity less freedom to really reach for the stars and don't and and have so much cushioning that they can't they can't they can't feel the depths of the bottom you you remove that range from society you remove the depth that life inherently um can have you you remove the richness and the breadth and the depth of the, you you remove the um the amplitude of life it's it's like removing uh you know the high notes and the low notes and just having a single note and trying to play music uh without a melody with one single fucking monotone and that's not what life is life is about the color it's about the depth and the the high, the lows and the highs it's the same with growth uh and building any form of courage um or bravery uh i was listening to a jordan peterson thing uh i can't remember if it was this week uh, or even earlier today I had so many things on um you don't try to make people less afraid you make them more brave and that's such a such a contrast to the way whether it's collectivists or leftists or politically correct people or you know the 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 cushion society that we've seen you know whether it's the um you know the millennials or the zoomers or wh whatever other fucking generation you know we're up to these days um they've been cushioned so much that the idea has been to avoid pain to avoid struggle to avoid fear as opposed to building courage building bravery building strength which is about standing standing up and facing all of these things as opposed to retreating it's about moving forward as opposed to hiding it's a completely different trajectory for not only life on an individual level but life you know at a at a broader more collective level is um you know when when we when we want to raise our children communicate with friends or family when we're when we're building a business when we're you know voicing our opinions our thoughts our beliefs you know in the community whether in a digital capacity or in a real capacity we need to think think deeply about what it is that we want do we want to build strength you know or do we want to build weakness and do we want to you know do we want to build people human beings that can take responsibility that have the fucking courage to move forward and to lead or do we want to build these weak people who require crutches and fucking cushions and floaties uh and whatever other uh, apparatus that's designed not to not to hurt them not to impact them not to you know allow them to feel any pain you know what what do we want to build hunger desire drive determination courage spirit and perseverance are all built from a place of lack you know they are forged in the depths of pain and struggle they are a product of fucking sacrifice this doesn't come from privilege these are things you don't get to earn when you have it all given to you you cannot remove the notion of lack and difficulty and hunger from life because it's no longer life that doesn't represent the amplitude and the richness and the differential and the dynamic you know equilibrium that dynamic flow that life actually is you know, everything has a cost and a price and there's a differential between those even but I won't go into that nuance here um you know the the real question is you know the 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 price of strength and the price of courage the price of bravery particularly on an individual level is is generally known um you know that and yes there are unknowns there's things that you know by definition when you stand up to the unknown um you you know you're not going to know what the costs are but um to to have strength it's going to cost pain it's going to cost some form of sacrifice it's going to mean you have to you have to 
press forward into that, that which you're afraid of. Whereas in a world where we cushion ourselves and we hide, whether it's risk or pain or whatever other um, individual collective or, or let's not say collective, let's call it um, a signal of an organism, of a, of a, of a, uh, of a complex organism, whether natural uh, in, in you know, fundamental nature, like you know, not including humans or the anthroposphere that we, that we are a part of. Um, when we start to remove the indicators like pain, like suffering, like all of that sort of stuff in a bid to, to numb people um, so as to avoid fear and pain and struggle, you then don't know what the cost of, uh, of, the, um, of the more tail events is going to be. And, you know, in effect, the price that you're going to pay is the price of weakness, is the price of potential entire destruction when the bad event comes, because it will. Nature is far, you know, nature existed long before us and will exist long after us. Um, so the universe, so will all that we observe and have learnt that we're a part of, particularly the last 500 years. That will continue. And the question is, do we want to build a strong society that can subsist and persist through that? Um, or do we want to opt for weakness, for comfort, and for staying within, you know, a, a tight range of equality? And what is the cost of doing that to society on the longer term? I'll touch on a few other points and then I'll wrap this video up. So I've got some notes here about pain being temporary and winning being forever. I think that's an Arnold inspired quote, you know, you know, I can't remember if he said, you know, winning is forever, glory is forever. But, you know, the decisions you make today and the ramifications into the future are extremely important. And the direction with which you raise, whether it's your children or whether, let's even just raise your fucking self how you decide to build yourself. You know, do you want to build off excuses? Um, do you want to build from a place of comfort or from a place of fear? Or do you want to build from a, from a place of depth, from a place of courage, from a place of bravery? Um, and know that one requires to have, to have felt the pain of lack, you know, to have been hungry. You know, having the courage to stand up and move forward despite your fears is a rare attribute, especially in a society that is optimized for safety and comfort as opposed to freedom and struggle. You know, I, I know what I want. You know, the question is, what do you and the people you care about want? And, you know, have they been conned and have they been convinced into this notion that comfort and safety is more important? You know, than freedom, choice, and, um, and fucking struggle. We've collectively lost touch with what it means to earn something of value. And this again really ties into, into hunger. That which is difficult to attain, that which requires more of you and forces you to dig deep, therein lies the beauty of life. That hunger is where the beauty of life is really found. You know, I've got a rocky quote here. It's not about how, how, how hard you hit, it's about how hard you can get hit and keep moving forward, how much you can take. Why are we inspired by the fucking underdog? I mean, the, the very word implies coming from the bottom. You know, we're, we're, you know movies um, like Rocky, The Pursuit of Happiness, Braveheart, all of these have had incredible impact, not only on myself, but on millions of people around the world because they are stories of climbing. They're stories of that dynamic of life coming from hunger and reaching for something that you did not have. And there's the warning stories like in Rocky 3, where when you lose your hunger, you know, when Rocky gets cocky after having, um, hey, that rhymed. Uh, after having won the two bouts with Apollo in number one and number two, 
Um, well, he technically didn't win number one, but after having won number two, um, you know, he gets cocky and he becomes the best boxer. Um, and then the character played by Mr. T, um, I've got his name in the damn, in the movie, but anyway, he comes and he kicks his ass because he was fucking hungry. He came from, like, he had that desire, that drive to win. And he whooped Rocky's ass. And, and that was a cautionary tale. Um, you know, and, and, the, and, the, and the message there is to remember what it felt like to be hungry. Um, and to get back in touch with that which made Rocky authentic in the first place. This effort and desire and hunger is what inspires us as human beings to move forward. Um, and, and removing that, you know, whilst in some ways, you know, one could argue it's, oh, it's noble to try and increase the quality of life for everybody. It's, um, it's blind to think that removing pain and struggle um, and, and the ability for people to have the right to build that up for themselves. You know, it, it's, it's wrong to think that we can somehow uh, remove that from society. It's, um, it's blind. So I'll finish on a couple last um, notes here. So the human spirit requires hunger in order to exist. And the human spirit is forged in struggle. Um, you know, in a subsequent video, I'm going to talk about the importance of pain, death and suffering. But uh, suffice it to say that if we remove those elements from life, if we're successful in removing those experiences from life, we're doomed to irrelevance, to meaninglessness. And what, be, what would be akin to a single note buzzing? It's the fucking flat line. That's no longer humanity. I'll wrap it up here. Hunger, pain, and all of these uh, things that the collectivists and the equalists uh, out there would have you believe are important uh, functions and things that we should be striving for uh, are madness in many ways. Um, you know, government intervention, you know, for example, with the story of, you know, more equality and, you know, better for all and raising the fucking bottom and all this sort of shit. Uh, whilst getting in the way of people and hypocritically uh, creating a system where um, you know they can rig the rules of the game through things like the Cantillon effect. It just shows you the how crazy society has become in a sense. And I urge you to think deeper about the dynamic uh, nature of life and the importance of being, having been at the bottom and the authenticity that comes with that. Uh, and particularly, you know, your ability to then to take that and to have it fuel your journey forward. So thanks again for listening. I'll see you in the next episode.